Okay, so you've had a chance to do this. Let's look at the various cases. So some of you looked at the case where r is equal to zero. And when r is equal to zero, L over V is equal to zero. And so the line is horizontal, and the intersection is past the equilibrium curve. We can't cross the equilibrium curve. Nature does not allow that. So therefore, this case is impossible. When we let R equal two, L over V is two over three. And so the slope this time, doing a rise over run of two over three, um, we end up with a graph that looks something like this, and I had fewer stages, four instead of five. At nine, the slope is nine tenths, and I get even fewer stages. Notice how it's coming in and it's approaching that y equal x line. But notice now, if I go to r equal infinity, L over V approaches the value of 1. I can't let R go any larger than that, so therefore this is going to be a limiting value definitely. And this value here seems to give me the fewest possible stages. So let's kind of regroup and then think about what this means. So I have some questions here that I want us to think about. I've drawn in my xb, my xd, and my feed, and I've drawn in the q line. What's the minimum reflux ratio? Now, I know that it is going to intersect the q line, and it's going to start at xd, and it can't cross the equilibrium line. So the limiting value should be where it just barely touches that line. That would be my limiting slope. Okay. This minimum slope is still r over r plus 1. And if I set it equal to n the slope, r is equal to m r plus m 1 minus m times r is equal to m and so r is equal to m over 1 minus m so i can find the reflux ratio if i can just determine the slope that's going to give me a limiting value okay and we're going to call this r minimum our minimum reflux ratio. So I've now posed two other questions here also. What's wrong with operating at infinite reflux ratio? That last case that we looked at, that some of you had, where the operating lines were just the y equal x line. Okay, so the issue there is, yes, I have the fewest number of stages, but reflux ratio is a flow rate ratio of liquid over vapor. So again, let's look at what's going on. At the top of my tower, I have my V. It's going into a condenser. And then some of that is being sent back as uh, reflux, or my L. And some of it's going on as product, D. If I have L over V is 1, right, L over V was 1 when R was equal to infinity, that means D is 0. I'm getting no product. None. Okay? So that's a problem. What if I came up just slightly beyond that? So I still have very few stages because at reflux ratio of nine, I still had the same number of stages and I'd be getting product. But again, think about that. That means that the amount of L coming back in is very large compared to the amount of distillate product. And when that comes back in, I have to fill this tower with this liquid that I'm sending through there 
which takes up a lot of volume, I have to build a bigger tower. It's going to cost me more money to operate when I'm at very close to infinite reflux ratio. So what's wrong with operating at the minimum reflux ratio? Well, let's just try drawing in steps here. So we'll come across and down, across and down, across and down. Okay, besides the fact that I'm getting a lot of steps, at some point I come in here and I pinch and I get infinitely many steps as I come into that pinch point. Okay, this is called a pinch point. And the number of steps as I approach that pinch point is going to be infinity. Now, that will give me the smallest diameter tower, but it'll give me infinitely many stages. Clearly, we'd like something somewhere in between. So, looking for a pinch point is going to lead to our minimum. Now, we've only been looking at this one system right now, so our pinch point for this nice ideal system is always going to be kind of where the Z crosses the equilibrium curve. But other systems that are trying to create a azeotrope, you know, they've got these little wiggles to them, a little more texture like in this graph right here. There the pinch point may be somewhere before you actually get to the equilibrium point. Okay? We'll be looking at other examples of other systems on Friday and have a chance to see how the shape of the equilibrium data affects the number of stages, the size of the tower, etc. Now, we're going to find the pinch point, so we're going to draw the line with the slope that is going to be the smallest that just barely touches that line. And that's going to give us our R minimum. And it's going to turn out that I'm going to minimize my cost when I combine both looking at the cost of building the tower and operating it. That means that I'm going to want to choose an R value typically between 1.2 and 1.5 times our minimum reflux ratio. Now, in order to specifically minimize this, I'm going to have to do some economic analysis. And we will be looking at this a little bit later in the semester. I'd like for you to take a, you know, a little bit of time this weekend and look at these practice problems. Again, Really understanding the effect of changing Q and changing R is going to really impact your ability to quickly understand what's going on with problems. On Friday, we'll be doing some more um, examples. They're not going to feel all that different. It's just that I'm going to give you some very different looking equilibrium curves than what we've been doing. Sometime between now and Friday, I also need you to do the Kahoot. I will be posting that in the assignments grid. And at that point, this concludes today's class. Thank you.